Our current way of life could not continue without rare earth materials. Every single day of our lives, all of us depend on technology that was built using rare earth minerals. In fact, the device that you are listening to me on right now most certainly contains rare earth minerals. Ultimately, rare earth minerals aren't actually that rare, but processing those minerals is extremely complex, and at this point, the vast majority of that processing is done in China. Efforts are already underway to create complete rare earth supply chains here in the United States, but new processing facilities will not start coming online until 2027 at the earliest. So what will happen to our economy between now and then? You know, I asked Google AI about the importance of rare earth minerals. This is what I was told. Rare earth minerals are highly important due to their diverse and crucial applications in modern technology, energy and defense. They're essential for manufacturing a wide range of products from electronic devices and electric vehicles to wind turbines and military equipment. Their unique properties, including magnetic and luminous qualities, make them indispensable for many modern technologies. All of that is accurate. We simply do not have anything else that can replace these exceedingly crucial minerals. According to Google AI, rare earth minerals are particularly important in the production of smartphones and computers. Rare earth elements are used in various components of modern technology, including screens for smartphones and computers, motors for computer drives, batteries for hybrid and electric cars. The U.S. defense industry is particularly vulnerable to rare earth shortages. For instance, each F-35 fighter jet requires about 920 pounds, that's about 417 kilograms of rare earth materials, while a Virginia-class submarine needs over 9,000 pounds, that's about 4,082 kilograms. Now, the Chinese government thinks that it is lowering the boom on us by banning the export of seven heavy rare earth minerals that are, quote, processed exclusively in the Asian power, unquote, as well as heavy rare earth magnets, of which about 90% of the world's supply are also synthesized on Beijing's territory. These heavy rare earth metals and magnets are critical to United States production of everything from cell phones to fighter jets, as Beijing's trade war with Washington simmers, leaving American industry in a bind. On April the 4th, the Chinese government imposed export restrictions on seven rare earth elements and their associated magnets in response to new U.S. tariffs. These measures apply to all countries, not just the United States, and require special export licenses. The good news is that the export of all 17 rare earth minerals is not banned. It is just seven heavy rare earth minerals that have been restricted. And China has a virtual monopoly on supplying all seven of them. Samarium, gadolinium, terbium, dysprosium, lutetium, scandium, and yttrium. These are mostly heavy rare earth elements, sometimes written down as HREEs, which means they're useful in high temperature magnets, the type of magnet used extensively in electric vehicle motors, wind turbines, and military electronic systems. China has a virtual monopoly in supplying all seven of them, since the imposition of export restrictions, several Chinese rare earth exporters have declared force majeure on contracts with foreign buyers, and shipments awaiting customs clearance at ports have been held back. For the moment, most manufacturers still have existing inventories of rare earth minerals that they can use, but it is just a matter of time before those existing inventories start running out. An official that worked in President Trump's first administration is warning 
that we could be facing a lot of economic pain. The export halt applies to all countries, but access to elements like dysprosium and yttrium is critical to U.S. industry, especially in the tech, electric vehicle, aircraft and defense sectors, according to Drew Horn, who served as the top U.S. official on strategic minerals and energy supply chain development in President Trump's first administration. Rare earths are in everything, he told the Post Monday, singling out the EV and auto space and everything from cell phones, defense key components, and space travel. China, Horn added, has essentially created an all-powerful monopoly with them. U.S. government and industry leaders fear that after the current export restrictions, China may take further steps, such as imposing tariffs, quotas, or even a complete ban on rare earth exports, which would severely jeopardize the supply chains of the American defense industry. Needless to say, we should be processing rare earth minerals here in the United States. A plan to do that was finally developed in 2024, but we're being told that new processing facilities will not be online until 2027 at the earliest. Since 2020, the U.S. Department of Defense has invested over $439 million to establish domestic rare earth element supply chains, including mining, refining, and magnet manufacturing, aiming to create a complete mine-to-magnet supply chain capable of meeting all defense needs by 2027. In order to avoid a nightmare scenario, we need the trade war with China to end. Unfortunately, that is not likely to happen anytime soon. Neither side intends to back down, and a top Chinese official has publicly stated that China should let, and this is a quote, those peasants in the United States wail in front of 5,000 years of Chinese civilization. Xiao Baolong, a top Chinese official who oversees Hong Kong affairs, branded the U.S. tariffs as extremely shameless, warned that bullying has never worked on Chinese people in a televised speech today. The extremely aggressive comments that Chinese officials have been making lately are very unusual. Normally, the Chinese are much more diplomatic. In another move, China has ordered its airlines not to take further deliveries of Boeing jets in response to the U.S. decision to impose 145% tariffs on Chinese goods. Bloomberg News reported that on Tuesday, April 15th, citing people familiar with the matter. Shares of Boeing, which considers China one of its biggest growth markets and where rival Airbus holds a dominant position, were down 0.5% in midday trading. Over the next few years, Chinese airlines were supposed to take delivery of dozens of the new Boeing jets. Air China, China Eastern Airlines, and China Southern Airlines had planned to take delivery of 45, 53, and 81 Boeing planes, respectively, between 2025 and 2027. This isn't gonna have too much of an impact on Boeing, but it just shows that the Chinese are starting to dig in for the long haul. My concern is that this trade war could eventually become a shooting war. We know that both sides have already been conducting cyber attacks on one another. Earlier this month, cybersecurity firm Mandiant released a report revealing that Chinese hacking group APT41 has significantly intensified its cyber espionage activities against U.S. government agencies, targeting especially sensitive military and technology secrets. According to the report, the group successfully breached the email servers of at least four U.S. federal agencies, extracting data related to defense contracts and military strategy. In fact, the Chinese are now publicly accusing the NSA of conducting cyber attacks inside China just two months ago. China accused the United States National Security Agency, the NSA, on Tuesday of launching advanced cyber attacks during the Asian Winter Games in February, targeting essential industries. 
China claims these attacks disrupted critical communications and power systems during key events, leading to brief but widespread outages and prompting immediate investigations from China's cyber security authorities. Police in the northeastern city of Harbin said that three alleged NSA agents to a wanted list and also accused the University of California and Virginia Tech of being involved in the attacks after carrying out investigations, according to a report by state news agency Xinhua on Tuesday. The university strongly denied involvement, stating that any implication of their participation is baseless and misleading. U.S. officials characterized the Chinese allegations as a coordinated propaganda effect intended to distract from China's own aggressive cyber operations. The NSA agents were identified by Xinhua as Catherine A. Wilson, Robert J. Snelling, and Stephen W. Johnson. The three were also found to have repeatedly carried out cyber attacks on China's critical information infrastructure and participated in cyber attacks on Huawei and other enterprises. Following China's accusations, the United States Department of Justice responded by indicting five alleged members of the Chinese People's Liberation Army's Cyber Espionage Unit, accusing them of stealing sensitive U.S. economic and technological data over a two-year campaign. This action marks a significant escalation in the ongoing cyber warfare between the two nations. Of course, the Chinese have been conducting cyber attacks against U.S. targets over and over again. Now look, I, I want to be very clear about something here. A cyber attack is an act of war. Experts have warned that continued cyber escalations risk spilling over into military confrontation. Retired General Mark Alexander, former commander of U.S. Cyber Command, emphasized in a recent testimony to Congress that without clear international cyber norms, accidental or deliberate escalation into conventional warfare remains a dangerously realistic possibility. So the fact that both sides are already conducting cyber attacks should deeply concern all of us. Hopefully, cooler heads will prevail, because if we stay on the path that we are currently on, this story is not going to end well. Thank you for watching.